Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. This will be my last video for this chapter, and we're going to talk about cylindrical coordinates. So first of all, uh, I, I previously introduced cylindrical coordinates in the, in the last chapter, um, but it fits well in this chapter as well, because cylindrical coordinates and spherical coordinates are both ways of trying to lift up polar coordinates to three-dimensional space. So um, it is a good reminder here. Basically, we just take our polar coordinates from two-dimensional space and then add a third parameter that gives you height. And so if you're imagining that you have polar coordinates living on the xy plane, then if you take your polar coordinates living on the xy plane and then add in depth, add in height, that's going to turn your circle that you had in 2D space into a cylinder in 3D space, hence the name cylindrical coordinates. Now, uh, we've already seen how to compute the volume conversion factor for, for cylindrical coordinates, but uh, just to remind you, you take your 3x3 three three determinant, um, and then when you compute that 3x3 three three determinant, you do get negative r, but uh, we're going to take the absolute value of that and use positive r, so we end up using the same Jacobian determinant that we used with polar coordinates, so you can treat it as if it's r for both polar and for cylindrical. So here's my summary. Um, just to remind you here, if you can parameterize a region, you could probably integrate over it. And if you can parameterize a region, you have a map from a, an RST rectangular prism to an XYZ cylind cylinder, hence the name cylindrical coordinates. And um, hence we can now do some interesting integration problems using cylindrical coordinates. So, uh, this is going to be a connection here with the previous videos because I'm going to repeat a problem that we did um, in the first video now using cylindrical coordinates. So we have the triple integral of x squared plus y squared plus z squared dx dy dz over this region x squared plus y squared plus z squared um, is less than or equal to 9 or um, the interior of a sphere of radius 3. All right, so if you want to see how to do this in spherical coordinates, refer back to my first video, but let's do it again now using cylindrical coordinates. So I remember that cylindrical coordinates are r cosine t, r sine t, and s, and my Jacobian determinant, I'm going to use the absolute value of that and use r. Now, if I take the equation for this sphere of radius 3, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 9. If I plug in my x of rst, y of rst, and z of rst, well, plug in r cosine t for x, r sine t for y, and s for z, and using the Pythagorean identity, I get r squared plus s squared is equal to 9. Now, if you were to solve this for r, you would get the square root of 9 minus s squared, and we know that s is going to go from negative 3 to 3. Now, what does this r equals 9 minus s squared actually say? Well, it basically says s is kind of like our z coordinate, right? s is depth, it's height, uh, it's altitude, right? So um, what we're told is that when s is negative 3, when we're at the lowest point on our sphere, the radius of that circular cross section is going to be, uh, what, 9 minus 9, which is 0. Okay, so we have a south pole of our of our globe and then as s is growing we get a larger radius and a larger radius until finally we have our largest radius when s is equal to zero or when we're looking at the cross section sitting on the xy plane then as s increases again um, our cross sections have a smaller and smaller radius until we finally hit the north pole when s is equal to three or the square root of 9 minus 9 is equal to 0. So that equation really does describe um, our circular cross sections as our z value or as our s value varies from negative 3 to 3. Um, that also gives us enough information to set up and compute our integral because uh, we've got our volume conversion factor. Um, we know that x squared plus y squared plus z squared simplifies to r squared plus s squared. And then now we know that dr is going to go from 0 to the square root of 9 minus s squared, right? We know what our radius needs to be to fill out each of these circles and turn them into, um, turn them into filled disks. 
We know that s is going to vary from negative 3 to 3 as we go down from the bottom all the way from the south pole all the way to the north pole on this globe. And then t, you can see we have a full rotation on the xy plane from 0 to 2 pi. So that's our setup. Now, if you were to crunch the numbers on that, you would get 972 pi over 5. This is a more difficult integral to compute by hand. Mathematica makes very quick work of it, though. Um, so my advice would be if you have to do this particular triple integral by hand and you're given a choice about what coordinate system to use, uh, the better coordinate system for this would definitely be spherical coordinates. Um, however, there are pros and cons. Um, a nice thing about knowing how to do this problem in cylindrical coordinates um, if you're trying to shave off the top of, the, of your sphere, like you're going to be doing in Triad 5, it's like an ice cream cone problem. Um, being able to do this in cylindrical coordinates will make it more easy to kind of shave off the top of your sphere and uh, stack your scoops of ice cream. So this is really good for Triad 5. All right, guys, so in this example, we're going to repeat the exact same problem yet again. Um, but this time we're going to make our own quote-unquote custom coordinate system. So we're still going to start out with the ideas behind cylindrical coordinates here. So remember, if we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 9, if we substitute in our cylindrical coordinates, r cosine t, r sine t, and s, we end up with r squared plus s squared equals 9. Solve that for r, you get the square root of 9 minus s squared. Now in the previous example, we incorporated the square root of 9 minus s squared as the top limit of integration for our dr integral. In this case, we're going to incorporate the square root of 9 minus s squared into our parameterization. So when I define my x of rst, instead of using standard cylindrical coordinates here, you can see I'm writing r times the square root of 9 minus s squared cosine t, r times the square root of 9 minus s squared sine t, z is the same. And now I've changed my coordinates, right? This is not cylindrical coordinates anymore. This is my own quote unquote custom coordinate system. So I have to calculate a different volume conversion factor using my x of rst, y of rst, z of rst. I did this in Mathematica. I got r times s squared minus nine. So I did not do that calculation by hand. And let's look at our triple integral setup here. All right, so in this case, um, in the previous example, I had r for my um, volume conversion factor. Now I have the absolute value of r times s squared minus 9. So there's a difference here. We have a little bit of a change. The other place we have a change, in the previous version, our upper limit of integration was the square root of 9 minus s squared. Now it's 1. So you can think about it as follows. Um, the previous example is nice because it has a really simple Jacobian determinant, but a slightly more complicated triple integral uh, set up for the limits of integration. And the version that we have here, instead we've got a really nice set of limits of integration. In fact, we're we have a coordinate system where we are integrating over a rectangular prism in RST space, but we have a more complicated Jacobian determinant. And that's really just a matter of preference, which, which version you want to do. You're going to get the same answer. Just make sure here when you're plugging in for x of rst, y of rst, z of rst, make sure you're using this new custom coordinate system. But you're not really going to run into any issues, because at least for me, I did this in Mathematica. So I defined all of this stuff in the computer, and I let Mathematica do all the hard work. And unsurprisingly, I got the same answer of 972 pi over 5. The only warning that I would, that I think I should probably give you is you really need to make sure that your volume conversion factor has absolute value bars on it because it's um, much more difficult with a new Jacobian determinant that you've never seen before. It's more difficult to determine if this is always positive, always negative, or switches back and forth between being positive and negative. And using ABS in Mathematica will sort that out for you so you don't run into any issues. Now, um, once we have these custom coordinates defined, the other thing that's kind of nice about it is we can use these custom coordinates to plot our region very easily. So we could easily go into Mathematica. Look what I did here. Um, I took my x of rst, y of rst, z of rst from the previous slide, 
put it in as Mathematica input, did a parametric plot here. And you can see I'm plotting the outer skin of this sphere because I was integrating over the entire solid region, but I want to just plot the outer skin of the sphere. So you can see for R, I've plugged in R equals one in each of those positions there, R equals one. That'll give me the outer skin of my sphere. So this is a pretty cool way using custom coordinates is a really cool way to plot some interesting looking um, surfaces and some interesting looking surfaces that enclose um, in a similarly, similarly interesting solid region. So let's try that out. And now in this final example, we're going to use what we've learned throughout this slideshow um, just to plot an interesting looking region. And so I created a plot of a peanut looking shape. And here's how I created it. So first of all, I started with the building blocks of spherical coordinates. So I started with standard spherical, spherical coordinates, r cosine t sine s, r sine t sine s, r cosine s. Then I said, you know what, let's take r here. And instead of keeping that constant like you would for a sphere, I'm going to define a function rad of s. And I'm going to make the distance from the origin for this shape depend on my zenith angle. I'm, uh, it'll depend on s. So you could see down here, when I'm creating my plot, instead of just plotting x of r, s, t, y of r, s, t, z of r, s, t for a fixed value of r, instead I've plugged in rad of s that varies as s varies, and you get this interesting looking peanut shape. Now you guys know how this works. If you can plot it, you could probably integrate over the region, right? If I can parameterize the region, I could probably integrate over it. So I can apply the techniques from the previous slides to find the volume enclosed by this outer skin of the peanut or find the volume of the solid peanut shaped region. So first let's try it out with spherical coordinates. Just like I plotted using spherical coordinates, um, I'm going to find my volume just using regular old spherical coordinates. So in this case, because it is the spherical coordinate system, my Jacobian determinant is the familiar r squared sine of s. And then um, s and t are going to be treated as they typically are for those parameters. So t goes from 0 to 2 pi, and s goes from 0 to pi. The only place that's a little bit different is right here for this innermost uh, limit of integration instead of going from say 0 to 1 or 0 to 5 or whatever you would you would do for a sphere i'm going from 0 to rad of s to reflect what i showed in my plot on the previous slide and when i run that through mathematica i did not do this by hand i ran it through mathematica and it gave me 916 pi over 105. now just like the couple examples that we saw um, recently i can choose between using standard coordinates, in this case, a spherical coordinate system, versus going with custom coordinates. So let's try that on the final slide for the slideshow. I'll try a custom coordinate system to find the same exact volume for this peanut shape. And here it is using custom coordinates. Guys, it looks very, very similar, but right here I have modified my x of rst, y of rst, z of rst, so that instead of just having r, I have r rad of s. Again, r rad of s, r rad of s. And now what r is going to represent is a parameter that's going to go from 0 to 1. And I've instead made my volume conversion factor a more complicated quantity. Um, you could see that I didn't put a semicolon on the end of this line of code right here for computing the volume conversion factor. So we could see the output. The volume conversion factor is this expression which is totally fine. I, look, I know it looks a little bit crazy. No big deal with that. The only thing we have to be careful of is we definitely, definitely need to take the absolute value of that volume conversion factor if we're going to use this technique, which we are going to try right here. Um, the benefit of doing it with custom coordinates would be that your limits of integration now are very, very simple. We're integrating over an RST rectangular prism and most of the algebraic ugliness is now contained within this volume conversion factor. So it's really just a matter of choices. You could, you could pick either technique. It doesn't really matter. You get 916 pi over 105. My recommendation would be to understand both 
So depending on what you see in the basics and tutorials and based on uh, and depending on what you see on the next quiz on the final exam, you're kind of ready for both perspectives. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed these three videos and good luck this chapter.